players and the largest payhouse on the planet. The World Poker Tour is a series of international high-stakes poker tournaments that can turn amateur players into millionaires and make professionals into superstars. With a $3.5 million prize pool on the line, it's time for these six players to live the dream. There's a brand new game on the Vegas Strip. It's the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship, tonight on the World Poker Tour. Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton alongside Vince Van Patten, and we are coming to you from the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino. That's right, Mike. We are back in Vegas, but a new arena, the very glitzy Mandalay Bay, has splashed down on the World Poker Tour Season 5 with the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship. Now, this is a brand new $10,000 event, and the winner is going to take home over a million dollars. And along with all that money, Vince, comes the prestige of winning a World Poker Tour title, and if that's not enough, bragging rights about being the first ever WPT champion at the fabulous Mandalay Bay. And we definitely have some sharks to look out for here in Mandalay Bay with three big-time cash game players circling the table. Bert Bhutan, Joe Tihan, and Brad Yukon Booth. But Vince, they will have to watch out for the chip leader, Alex Althred. Alex is a poker boot camp instructor who used to work with us at the WPT, but is now on the other side of the table looking to bring home his dream, a WPT title. Let's shuffle up and deal. Let's talk about the structure here. Everyone has to ante up $3,000 in front of them. In the blinds, those two automatic bets you have to put in are going to be twelve and 24000 to begin. Cards are in the air, about to get started. Action's going to be on Al Stoneham, who's an ex-professional bowler. Well, Al looks down at an ace-eight. He's going to throw it away. Brand folds. Steve Vincent out with ace-six. And now Joe Tehan. He's got a big hand, got ace-queen. This guy is a tough 25-year-old poker player, folks, I can tell you. I played some live game poker with him just last week, in fact. And he told me he was going to be at this final table, Vince. No way. He is going to raise it. Makes it 68000 Bert out. Now around our man Alex Althred, a fellow WPT boot camp instructor. He also has ace-queen, Vince. Going to re-raise. He has the exact same hand, and he's going to come over the top with it. He is going to put the pressure on Joe Tehan right here. Remember, Alex is the chip leader. Another 200. Well, he's going to raise $200,000 more. Well, he is going to play some power poker right here on Joe. Very impressive by our former flunky. He won his satellite seat through a boot camp tournament, and what an amazing road it's been to the final table for Alex. Vince, this is the guy who used to bring us coffee. <laughs> now he's playing for a million bucks. Just incredible. He was our gopher, and now he's our <laughs> hero. Hey, is he wearing a tie? He is, Vince. This he looks is, very dapper oh, this evening. I, Please. He used to walk around in those like muscle shirts, and now look at him. When you're playing for a million bucks, you step up in class, Vince. In the meantime, what is Joe Tehan going to do here with Ace Queen? He's already pulled all his hair out of his head. First hand, a big decision right now. Alex has got to sweat this. But they both have a lot of chips. I'm going to pass. I've... Well, Joe is going to lay it down. So some terrific power poker by Alex Althred right there as to his chip lead. Joe Tihan was just manhandled by Alex, who's very confident. Now, don't forget, they quit playing late last night, and Alex has hardly slept. He whipped together that suit. I think he borrowed off of you, looks like. <laughs> and, I mean, he is so excited. Gotten through a satellite, wins our very first spot here tonight at Mandalay Bay. He's told me his dream in life would be to have our job, but his bigger dream is to win out here in the World Poker Tour. And I don't blame you. It pays more. You took four extra off. Alex made a nice play there, but I don't fault Joe Tehan for laying down his hand. I would have laid Ace Queen down there myself. When a guy comes over the top of you for 200000 you just have to muck Ace Queen, Vince. you got to give him credit for making a good play. Cards are back in the air. Action's going to be on Brad Booth this time from Canada. Brad's got Jack-9 offsuit, throws it away quickly. I'm all in. Look at this. Steve Vincent going all in right here. Well, he's got Ace Queen. Oh, unfortunately for him, Joe Tehan right behind him has picked up Ace King. He's got big slick. And he's reaching for chips. What a problem for the ex Broadway actor, Steve Vincent. Throwing in his last couple hundred thousand. Look at Joe makes a quick call here. Bert out. 
I don't know if I want to see something good or bad here. Alex throwing away his king 10. And Al looking down at Jack 10. He's going away, so two-way action. So the retired businessman from Henderson, Nevada, up against it here. Steve Vincent, you know, this is his first tournament ever that he's ever played. He's making the final table, but what a place he is right now. Ace-Queen up against Ace-King. He needs the big suck out. Otherwise, it's back to Broadway for this man. My end last time. Well, right now, Joe's about a 70% favorite to win this pot. Two big hands, five cards to come. Here comes the flop. Well, it's 9-4-4. Four, four. Now Steve could get a tie out of the hand if a 9 comes up. Steve needs a queen to take the lead, and a 9 will give him a tie. All he wants to do is spike a queen, take the pot. Let's see if he gets it on the turn. No. A 3 comes off on the turn. So right now, Steve Vincent must catch a 3 or 9 to get a split pot. He needs a queen to win the pot. Coming down to the river, Mike. Here we go. Well, it's a 5. So that's going to do it for Steve Vincent. 77 years young, playing in his first tournament ever. Well, $94,000 for the ex-Broadway actor. Sad to say the curtain has finally closed on Stephen Vincent. We are down to five. You know, he did Broadway, did television. He's like one of your family. Good guy, and a better tan than me, too, I might add. <laughs> All right, back to the table. Bert quickly folds his hand. Now Alex peeks down at an awful Jack Deuce offsuit. He's going to lay it down, round to Al on the button. He's got a king deuce. Short stack with clubs. Now here's the problem when you don't have any chips. What do you do with a hand like this? I'm going to pass. Well, Al's going to lay it down. The Canadian Brad Booth, the small blind, calls the remainder off. He has 9-8. Now Joe Tehan with king 9 says, let's see the flop. So Brad with the 9-8. Joe with the king nine. And the flop comes king, queen nine. Oh, just great for Joe. He's flopped two pair. Well, Brad quickly checks bottom pair. And Joe's going to bet his two pair. He bets 30,000. And the Yukon kid not going to go away. Well, he got quickly called. He checked it and then quickly called Joe when he bet. Here comes the turn card. It's a seven of spades. Well, Brad checks. What does Mr. Two Pair do here? Yeah, looks like he's going to make a wager. 56. About 56,000. Now, the young Canadian. Wow, Vince, he's reaching for a lot of chips here. He's only got a pair of nines. I'll make it 185. Oh, he's going a little nutty here. He's going over the top. He's going to raise it. Going up to 185,000 to go. You always fear your opponent might have a straight here. He's got a jack 10. Remember, this pot wasn't raised before the flop. So... Very unlikely you're going to put your opponent on a pair. You'd think the guy would have raised out of the small blind. Nice hand, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Played a lot of poker with Brad and side no limit games. And I'll tell you something, this guy always exudes extreme confidence, even when he goes bust. Very confident guy. Well, Joe just calls here. He doesn't re-raise. Joe Tehan way out in front with the kings and nines. His opponent's drawing dead. He's got no card he can catch to win this pot. It's a complete farce here by the Canadian. Six of spades on the river. Now there's a potential flush and a potential straight on the board. Action back on Brad. Only has the nines. Let's see if he keeps up the shenanigans here. How about 400,000? Oh, well, he fired one shell. He's going to fire a cannon now, Vince. 400,000 he's betting. He has stuck himself out there, and he's continuing. What a gutsy move. Wow, did I misplay this hand pretty badly? Well, you haven't misplayed it yet, Joe. Talking to himself there, not a good sign. Well, here's the problem. When you don't take the lead with your hand... Why did I misplay this one? In other words, when you don't re-raise with the two pair on the turn right here... Now you're putting yourself in an awkward position. Why would I give you a free look at the room? Jeez. Thinking that your opponent might have caught a flush or a straight to beat you here. Yeah, but I still can't believe you can lay this down. This is like a whining call you got to make. You got to figure. Got to pay this off. I 
Nice hand, Brad. Incredible. He laid down two pair there. He was afraid that maybe the guy was four flushing on the turn, especially when he come out firing 400,000 on the river. Well, Vance, you remember earlier in that hand when Brad said to him, nice hand, Joe. Nice hand, Joe. Now, do you think some of that verbal jousting <laughs> caused Joe to think he had a much stronger hand than he really had? Very possibly. Brad is a good talker at the table, but you know what? Man, you can't be a great player if you don't make good laydowns. You can only bluff a good player, and that time, I I Joe is the man the that player. got bluffed. Jesus. Well, you're right about that, Vance, but to be a great player, you've also got to make great calls. He didn't want a big pot had he made that call. I just got a lot of respect for this young Canadian, Brad Booth. To fire in $400,000 at the end. Only a handful of players can do that, and you just saw Brad do exactly that. I had bartending and waitering jobs. I had delivery jobs. I even worked in a sawmill and a sheet metal place. It was pretty ridiculous, but all those jobs that I had turned me into the person, and even though I do kind of some crazy things with staying at the Bellagio and stuff, I really try to respect the dollar as much as I can. But what a character this guy is. The guy actually lives at Bellagio and just goes downstairs and plays poker. Well, i tell you, if he wins here, he might consider moving over to the beautiful Mandalay Bay. I guarantee you that. Don't go away. We've got plenty more action coming to you from the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship. We have a new champion. There it is. Vince, that's going to do it. Champion. Yeah! Welcome back to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Poker Championships from Las Vegas. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. Five players remaining. Our current chip leader out of Canada is Brad Yukon Booth with almost two million in chips. And right now, Al Stoneham is the short stack. He's got a couple hundred thousand. Win is going to take home <laughs> over a million dollars. Action right is going to be on Al Stoneham. Well, Al Stoneham is old school, Vince. I play a lot of poker with Al. Believe me, he knows how to play a short stack. Got a big hand here, ace, queen of hearts. Yeah, he's going to go with this one, Vince. I can tell you that. You have to when you're on a short stack, no doubt about it. You guys have absolutely no respect for a raise. I'm going to go all in. There he is. He's going all oh, yeah. in. He's pulled the trigger here for all his dough. Brad quickly folding, but right around the corner. Joe Tehan again picking up big slick ace king. Unbelievable. Remember, he broke Steve Vincent a minute ago on the same scenario where Steve moved all in with ace queen and he had ace king. 150, 175, 197. Joe just can't believe his luck today. 400. And there he goes up with a raise of 203,000 to make it 400,000 to go. Bert going out. Round to Alex. Right. If I get aces, they better be suited. <laughs> Looks at 7-5. Nope. So Al Stoneham up against it here. He's got ace queen. His opponent's got ace king. Yeah, Joe gets a refund and they show the cards. Same. Well, Vince. There they are. Al Stoneham was a professional yeah, bowler for five years on the tour. And right now, he's got to feel like he's up against a 7-10 split. He's got to hit something to stay alive. First big one. I could have got broke the hand before anyway. Uh, Al Stoneham, this time, he's holding Mike Tyson. Ace queen. Looks strong, but gets beat a lot. Well, we have a saying in poker, never get broke with a queen in your hand before the flop. But certainly when you're on the short stack, you got to move in with ace queen. Are you serious? When? On the river. You're sick. Oh, so far Al's hit the 7-10 split. He caught it. Oh. It's come Queen Jack Jack. So he is taking the lead. Right now, Joe's going to have to catch a 10 or a king to take the lead. How sweet it is for Al. Got to sweat out the turn. Here we go. Oh, oh no. The king comes right off. Oh, what a horrific spike there. Unbelievable. Now, Al's going to need a queen to win the pot. He would tie it if a 10 comes off. Oh, that is just That's not right. What a flip-flop that was on the turn. Last card coming up. Well, it's a king. So Joe T has made kings full of jacks. He's going to take it down. And ironically, for the second time at this final table, Joe's picked up ace king. Both his opponents have picked up ace queen. He's busting them both. That was perfect time. Well, the former professional bowler, it's like he threw two strikes in a row, and all of a sudden the other guy hit three strikes in a row. There's nothing you can do. He's a fifth place finisher, $134,000. Al Stoneham out of this event. 
It's going to be interesting to see how play develops now because no longer can you attack a short stack. There aren't any. Let's go down to the table. Action is going to be on Alex Althred. Well, Alex looks down at a five deuce. Going to lay it down. Brad quickly folds. Round to Joe Tehan. And I can't believe this. Once again, he has big slick ace king. Does he throw that hand away ever, Vance? He picks it up every time, it seems like. And this time, he's just calling, trying to disguise his hand. And Bert Bhutan with 4-3. Well, he's going to get to see a free flop. He says, give us the flop. And the flop comes 10-7-4. Bert's flop bottom pair. And nothing materializing for Mr. Big Slick. Well, he's going to bet the ace king anyway, Vance. There you go. He leads out and bets 34,000 here. Into Bert, who has caught a piece of that, and he quickly makes the call. Don't get mad at him, Bert. <laughs> Joe's saying, don't get mad because I bet, please. Joe bet, and Bert pounds his chips into the pot, calling him. The board pairs tens. Joe checks. Well, Bert believed his fours were the best hand in the flop. He still thinks they're the best hand, and indeed they are. So he fires out and bets, and he's going to pick up the pot. Yeah, $60,000 bet. Joe goes away, and just like that, Bert Bhutan playing the junk on the big blind, takes his first pot here tonight. He put his opponent on two big cards in that situation. He thought the two fours were the best hand. That's why he called him on the flop. When the board paired on the turn, he still thought they were the best hand. Well done by Bert Bhutan there. Well, there you go with a classic poker tell. When you act strong, bang your chips in. You're usually not that strong. Bert wasn't that strong, but he's going to take that pot. Well, Bert's an emotional player. If he takes a bad beat, you can see it. He stands up and walks around the room a lot. But terrific guy, very good poker player. Uh, my name is Bert Bhutan. I play No Limit Texas Hold'em. I make more money at that than I do in my regular job. There's a lot of similarities between poker and the stock market. Playing the market is gambling in a certain form. Well, you got to say, Bert is a very passionate poker player. Very excited to be here today. <laughs> now, this guy can play. He's been playing for 13 years. He's taken a few titles in his life. He has. He's won a bracelet at the World Series of Poker. So he's pretty high stakes poker at Bellagio. In fact, plays a fair amount with really both incredible. Joe Tehan and the Canadian Brad Booth. Joe T. Han folding king three. I'm going to raise it. Around to Burt in the small blind, and he's picked up ace oh. king suited. What is ace going king on? Ace king of hearts. Well, that's the dominating hand here tonight, ace king. No doubt about it. Burt's going to raise it here. <laughs> Makes it 84,000 to go. It's on Alex, and look at that look. He does not trust Burt. Alex has got a decent hand. King 10. And he's considering this. Well, Alex has got chips. He's got position on his opponent. But in the meantime, it cost him 60 more thousand to call with King-10. Little does he know, he is dominated right now. I call. Well, he's given action here, Mike. He has made this call. So, big slick up against King-10. Let's see the flop. Well, the flop is 8-7-5 with two clubs. Action on Bert. Well, Bert's going to check. And you see Alex, I'm very proud of him, didn't look at the cards, just looked at his player trying to get a tell. Alex checks right behind him. I'm a little surprised by that, Vince. Well, a six comes up. That makes an open-ended straight on the board. I'll check. Well, Bert checks. 35. Alex going to reach for chips. He's going to bet 35000 a very small bet, into a $180,000 pot. Well, he's got a little inside straight draw. A very peculiar bet because it's so small in relation to the pot size. And Bert's going to call because of it. Comes the river card. And look at this. A three of hearts helps neither player. Bert once again checking. Now let's see if Alex will take out some ammunition and try to steal this. 65. Well, he is, Vince. Alex is going to bet 65000 Again, a very small bet into a $250,000 pot. And Bert is going to look him up here. Bert has analyzed this hand perfectly. Yep. He knows it. He stands up. He's proud of himself here for calling him down with Ace King. And look at Bert. How excited. Alex is smiling here. But I can tell you, folks, we don't teach that in WPT Boot Camp. But how do you really feel? First of all, if you check on the flop and then try to bet on the turn, sometimes it's not going to pass the smell test with your opponent. It didn't there with Bert. Another thing he did wrong was he bet too small. He only bet about 20% of the pot. He got paid off a couple times. 
Mistakes by Alex Alfred. They are playing fast here at Mandalay Bay. We are down to four. Stay tuned. We're coming right back with more on the World Poker Tour. I love sports. I love all types of games. I just get excited. It's just my emotions and my personality. When I win a pot, I let it out. If I lose a pot, I can't help but show my emotions either way. Mandalay Bay decided to join the World Poker Tour when we saw how successful it was at the Bellagio and the Mirage. It was just a natural for us to join in. We had 349 people in the final. It's going to continue to grow year after year. Yes. The poker boom has exploded in Las Vegas. It's unbelievable. Every hotel has a room, but we have a special room here. Unbelievable employees. Poker is the future, and we're definitely going to be part of it. Well, we are back at the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship. Four players remaining. It is moving fast. We've lost our two short stacks at this final table. Ironically, both of those guys held ace-queen and went all in. And Joe Tehan had ace-king on both occasions. The ace-king stood up. Those guys are gone. We are down to our final four. And right now, the Canadian has the chip lead. Brad Booth, he's got over $2 million. And everyone else has about the same, about 1.5 to 1.7. Action is going to be on Joe Tehan, and I can't believe this. Once again, he picks up big slick. He's going to raise it. He makes it 64,000 to go. Right behind him, Bert Bhutan has picked up ace queen, Vince. What? How many times have we seen this today? But Bert's not re-raising with it. He's just making the call here. Numerous times, just uncanny. Now, Alex with his eight deuce out around to Brad Booth, who has a nothing little ten deuce offsuit. Vince, he is re-raising here, oh, though. Man. He's making a 230000 to go with a 10-deuce offsuit. Buckle up. He yep. is making a professional move, thinking that Bert can't be that strong. Otherwise, he would have raised, so he's taking advantage of it. Little does he know, the man on his left has big slick. Well, he's hoping that Joe didn't have that strong a hand. Figuring if Joe laid his hand down, Bert would lay his down as well. So he's trying to pick up the pot here by making a move. Let's see if it works. I raised. Oh boy. Joe saying raise. Now look at this. Bird is folded. He's up out of his seat like a pop tart. You're always supposed to wait for the mount to be raised there, Bert. Brad makes a good point there. Oh, I thought he said raised. And raise it. Oh, I didn't see. I'm sorry. Joe said raise. And as soon as he said that, Bert mucked his hand. 400 more but it makes a big difference. Does the guy raise the minimum raise? Does he move all in? He can bet any amount he wants there. You're supposed to let him complete his bet before you fold your hand. Well, there's the raise. It's 400,000 in addition. Most likely irrelevant because Brad Booth has a 10-deuce offsuit. Oops. And any kind of raise is going to bump him out. Can you beat Queens, really? And now anger sort of seeps in. Well, we know there's no way he's going to make this call with a 10-deuce offsuit. Yeah. Got to respect him for the gall, though, to make these kind of moves. This guy's a very creative, well. aggressive player. All right, kid. Maybe Doyle Brunson's his idol here. This hand is named Doyle Brunson in the poker world, the 10-deuce. But he didn't play it as well as Doyle. Okay. He is going to lay it down. But the point is well made, though. You know, when you're in a game, even if you know you're going to fold your hand, courtesy dictates that you wait until your opponent make his raise before you muck your hand. No doubt about it, and Bert knows that. But Bert just made a mistake, and he apologized for it. So it does happen at the table. Bert, a veteran of the poker world, apologizes. No harm, no foul. But chalk another pot up to Joe Tehan. And Vince, he has held some cards at this final table so far. No doubt about that. Joe quickly folding, and now Bert Batan with Queen 10. He's in a small blind. He's going to make the call. He Bert. is. Action happening fast. Now Alex no, Althred with 9-7 of clubs. Don't call me late for dinner. I check. Well, he says give us a flop here. So we're going to have three-way action. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Tip your waitress, folks. Try the view. No raise before the flop. Three out of four in this. Let's take a look. Oh, what a flop for oh. Bert. It's come queen, ten, five with two diamonds. Bert Putan has the top two pair yes, here. Yes, he does. Now, let's see if he plays it slow. No, he's coming out to make a little TC fly. Bet 35,000. Alex going out. Raise it. Brad with two ducks. 151. Two deuces is going to raise here. He continues his aggressive manner. Oh, man, the Canadian going into a deep freeze here. Raising with the deuces. I want to raise it. 
Uh -huh. Who does he know what he's up against? This is not going to bode well for him here. Bird is holding the top two pair right now. 450. A masculine re-raise by Bert. 450,000 more. Is that right? That's going to silence the quack on those two ducks, Vince. No doubt about that. So even if Brad would put Bert on a flush draw or a straight draw, he's not going to be able to stand the heat here with just two deuces. It's frostbite time here for the Canadian. You try to make a move, and yeah. the guy just sticks your head in the snow. Okay, sir. Well, Vince, you got to give the guy credit. At least he's making moves at pots. He's showing a lot of heart here, unfortunately for him. Not working for him right now. Well, Vince. we saw it work early against Joe, and he did it so well. But now it's turning the other way. Now look at this. The wonder cam. A deuce on oh, the turn. No. And a three on the river. So wow. If he just slow calls the 35,000, he would have three deuces up against the top two pair. He could break them. Yeah, I believe he would have busted him, Vince, had he just called the 35,000. But he was just trying to make a play at a pot. Unfortunately for Brad, Bird had the top two pair. We're down to four at the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship. Don't go away. One thing I try to be as well mannered as possible. If I do decide to take a stab with pot and I do lose the hand, I just try to be a gentleman and I say nice hand and I let them know, you know, you may have got me this hand, but I'll uh, cut you up like a ripe cantaloupe the next time. Welcome back to Las Vegas. We're at the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship. Four players, a lot of parity and chips. Well, with that last hand, Bert Bhutan is now our chip leader at this final table. He crosses the $2 million chip mark. Andes and blinds remain the same. $3,000 ante, 12 and 24 blinds. We are down to four players. Winner's going to take home over a million dollars. Action on our chip leader. Well, he looks down at a 10-7, lays it down. Now, WPT boot camp instructor Alex Outhred. I need uh, oh, Brad's. Peaks down at ace five off suit. Well, he's on the button. He's yes. in position. And he's going to raise it with the ace high. Good 90. Going to bet 90,000. Very professionally done. Brad went out and Joe Tehan as well. So he's going to steal the blinds, pick him up. And look at Alex getting up from his chair. Very happy. Well, he's happy to finally pick up a pot here, Vince. You know, if there's a Cinderella at this final table, it is Alex Outhred. These other three guys are high-stakes poker players. They played a lot with each other. Alex, whose nickname is the Insider, is actually the Outsider at this table. Well, it's great to see it happen. He's one of the hardest workers we've known on the World Poker Tour. And I tell you, it's nice to see it happen. He's such a nice guy taking a shot at over a million dollars here tonight. I uh, used to work for a WPT in their production house, and uh, I actually did used to get Mike and Vince's lunch. Yeah, Mike was all about soup, you know. A couple of minutes strong, you know. I think really where I learned about this game was when I had the opportunity to just hear what Mike and Vince had to say about players and really listen. When you watch the WPT, you learn about poker. It's almost that simple because they take such pains to present this game by getting into the minds of the players. Alex, he's going to be tough because, uh, you know, of all the studying and stuff he's done in the game, He's probably the one I'm going to have to be more concerned about. I learned by just listening to these guys analyze these hands, by being with these guys and, you know, having lunch with them and talking about poker. Remind me to order a Chinese chicken salad and have Mike get it for me right now. That's good. Vince, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not sure about the other three guys, but I know for Alex Alfred, this is life-changing money to him. Huge money at stake here that could literally change his life, make it much easier. Action right back on Alex. He's got the ace eight offsuit. He's under the gun, meaning he has to act first here. Raise. And he's going to raise with it. Nice. Alex, a very aggressive style player. Yes, he is. The Canadian goes out and now around to Joe T. And I, oh, wow, he's got the weapons of mass destruction. Pair of aces. What cards this guy's been holding at this final table. And he's going to make it 212,000 to go. Bert quickly folding and back around to. Alex. Well, Vince, you can't fault Alex for raising to start with with an ace eight offsuit in the four handed game. But now, when a man re raises you and a guy who hadn't shown anything but hands all night long, pretty easy to get away from an ace eight, I think. This is at 122. Find out how much more to take a shot at this. I re raise. Oh, no. Wow. Alex Outred is coming over the top here. Four total, so that minus uh, 122 is the race. 
He has raised it, gone up to four hundred thousand dollars. Wow, he's raised it one hundred and eighty-eight thousand more. Totally misread his man. Doesn't believe Joe's strong. We know because the WPT cam brought to you by Budweiser. He's got the nuts. Well, in the crowd, we see Joe's friends as well. They're all holding their breath right now. Can we bring it in so I can see it? Yeah. Now look at this. A little performance going on by Joe. Acting a little worried. About a million behind. Well, Vince, what he's worried about is just how he's going to play this hand. Does he want to call and let Alex continue to hang himself? Or does he want to go ahead and just re-raise right here and try to get Alex to commit all his chips before the flop? So you could just squeeze in the rest. Oh, no, you can't. I'll just, I'll just let you do it. And right now, poor Alex thinks this guy might fold on him. We know, of course, the massacre has just begun. Well, either way, it's going to be very ugly for Alex here. Well, now you've seen a very good poppycock show right here by Joe Tehan, taking his time, thinking it through, pretending like he's upset. How much you have behind? One million. Give or take 2,000. Well, Joe has more chips than Alex. If Alex gets crazy here, he could get busted. Like watching a public execution here. That tie he's wearing around his neck, Vince, could turn into a noose very shortly. <laughs> all right, all in. There he goes, all in, yep. says that's enough. He's going all in. I don't want this guy outdrawing me. Make well, you pay for it if you want to gamble. Ooh. Ooh. Alex tried making a move here. Unfortunately for him. He is up against it. Will he throw any more chips away in this pot? He took a shot. He didn't believe his guy was that strong, but bad timing for that shot. You know, he's made a re-raise that I thought was a poor re-raise. And this will be a much worse call. Well, tonight's been the night of creative play, of a lot of gutsy moves, re-raises, but they're backfiring. They don't always backfire like this. I mean, this guy's been in the tournament for four days, and these kind of moves got him here. Well, everybody's standing in the crowd. Joe Tehan saying to himself, come on, Alex, please, call me, call me, call me. That's him. And Alex does muck his hand, so he does make the right decision there anyway. I say hand, I mean move. Well, I just want to say that Alex is an excellent poker player, but he was wrong about nine times in that hand, and it really hurt him. You know, he doesn't want to get outplayed by these pros, and he's trying to stand up to them to prove to the world that he's a top player. Unfortunately for him, his timing was off in this hand, and I think it's fine to raise with the ace-8 offsuit to start with, but when your opponent comes over the top of you, it's a trap hand. It's pretty easy to get away from, I think, because even if you make a call and an ace comes up there on the board, you know, now you're stuck if your man comes out and bets the pot. You're to guess, does he have it or doesn't he? You know, Alex got involved with a trap hand, and it cost him. The blinds are a massive 24,000. There is some gnashing of teeth going on down there, I'll tell you that much. Who's going to take the title? We'll find out when we come back. I think that poker is the same at almost any level. The competition is obviously better at the higher limits, but I think it's really helped me to be playing in higher limit cash games where I don't really care about the money. Well, I shouldn't say that, not in this tournament. I mean, this tournament, obviously, the money is huge. Welcome back to the Mandalay Bay Poker Championships, where a millionaire will be crowned here. And right now, Joe Tehan has about 2.2 million. Bert Batan with 2 million. Brad Booth with 1.6 million. And the short stack, the man that started out as a chip leader is Alex Althrid, down to about 1.1 million. Well, Alex just lost 400,000 in that last pot, but he could have gotten broke if he'd have made that call. Joe Tehan. Peaks down at his A6 offsuit. About the worst hand Joe's picked up tonight right here. He's on the button in position Four. with the chip lead. He's going to raise it. Makes it 64,000 to go. Bert Batan with queen five goes out. And now Alex Outhred in the big blind oh. with 6-5 offsuit. Well, he's going to make the call. Going to hope to hit a flop here where he might double up through his man Joe Tehan. Well, you gotta figure he's steaming still a little from that last hand. 64 total, right? Well, here comes the flop. Ace, 7-3. So Joe is flop top pair. Alex has the gut shot straight draw. A forward give him a straight, but he's gonna check. 
Just like that. Joe not playing slow. He comes out with a $65,000 bet. Call. And Alex is going to make the call with the gut shot draw. Mm. If you're sitting in Joe's seat, your antenna goes up here now. You raise before the flop. You bet on the flop when an ace comes out there and your opponent calls you. He's got a little touch of the tilties here, I think. Here comes the turn card. A king does not help Alex. Uh, Alex is going to check. And Joe checks right behind him. A nine comes off now. Nothing materializing for Alex Althred. Well, the only way Alex could win the pot is to bet at it. He can never win checking. 250. Wow, he's going to bet a quarter of a million dollars here, Vince. What do you got? <laughs> Well, what's interesting, Mike, we've seen Joe make some tight laydowns. This guy can be bowled over. Can this work? He doesn't have a great kicker, just the six. It's not that draw heavy of a flop. Uh, Either missed or else you made uh, two pair. Uh, Joe's analysis is spot on. Question is, will you make the right decision from here? I made a bad check on the turn. Alex praying for the lay down. Well, at least this time he's bet enough to take a shot at the bluff. Nice hand. But he gets the call wow. nevertheless. You were right. I missed. Oh. Well, great analysis there by Joe Tehan. Figured that hand out perfectly, made the tough call, and takes down the pot. Yes, and right now, Alex Althred is being chopped up like the guest star on Sopranos. It is getting ugly. Oh, you're right, Vince. Just nothing working for him right now. <laughs> Wrong decision, Joe. Nice hand. I was trying to rep two pair. It was, exactly it was one was or the other. It was, it was like five, it was four exactly five or... I was, or, uh... rep. I was just trying to hit a four and double. <laughs> so Alex Althred yeah, no. down, but not out. Nice hand, bro. He's still Four living players. the dream, Vance. Four players remaining here at the Mandalay Bay Poker Championships. Action's going to be right back on Alex Althred. He looks down at a nice hand, ace queen. Well, he's got the notorious yeah, ace queen. And he's going to raise it, makes it ninety thousand to go. Into Brad Booth, who's got the button and a six-five, lays it down. Joe out. Round to the big blind, and look at this. Burke Bhutan has picked up two jacks. Oh, what a nice hand, four-handed. A little less than five left. Well, he's already taken a peek over to Alex Stack and sized him up. Knows he's only got about a half million left. I'm all in, I call, whatever it is. Well, look at this. He has gone all in, and Alex says, I'm calling no matter what, so he has made this call. Well, we've got the classic race situation here. The two over cards versus the under pair. The ace-queen has not fared well for the first two guys that went all in with him tonight. They're out of here. No, it has been the jinx hand, the ace-queen. Will it be a turn from right now? We will see. Stay tuned. We're coming back with the conclusion of this hand in just a moment. Welcome back to Mandalay Bay. I'm Sabina Kadecki, and here's a recap of the action so far. At Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, the water turned treacherous as the Knights' two short stacks sank from sight early on by losing it all on Ace Queen. Now with three cash game sharks circling the million dollar prize, the one-time mighty chip leader is all in with Ace Queen and on the verge of drowning in the desert. So far we've seen the Ace Queen eliminate two players at this final table. Could it possibly eliminate a third, Vince? Over $1.3 million in the pot. I have my one good hand. Alex over high five in the crowd. He's saying, why can't I get lucky and win a race here one time? One time, and if I need it again, two times. You got to win these races if you want to win No Limit Hold'em Poker Tournaments. All right, let's see. Who's going to get lucky here? Bert Bouton or Alex Althred? Oh. oh, a jack right on the flop. Bert high five in the crowd. He has flopped three of a kind. And right now, Alex is going to have to have two runners to make a straight to take him out. He's got to catch a king and a ten or a deuce and a three. That is it. Dismal flop there for Alex, but miracles could happen. Here we go with a turn. Well, there's the king. There's one of the cards. So Alex 
Alfred must catch a 10 on the river to make an ace high straight to win this spot to stay alive in this tournament. He's got a four outer. Good TV. He's a big dog. Well, he's alive. Yes, he is. Bert Bouton pacing around the room here. Says, how can this happen to me? I had him dead on the flop. It's never easy, Bert. Good TV. Well, it's a king. Didn't get it. So that's going to do it. Alex Alfred, known as the insider, is now on the outside looking in. What a tremendous tournament for the boot camp king, Alex Alfred. Well, Vince, he didn't get the trophy here tonight or the million bucks, but he had a nice payday and certainly captured the best dressed award at this final table. So, Alex, what was your experience like at a WPT final table? Like I said um, to the guys next to me, that was an awesome first hand. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I'm just glad I got here. I mean, I've been watching the show for so long and you always wonder how would I do on that stage. And unfortunately, most of my hands I played, not so hot, but um, it's just an amazing experience. I wouldn't trade it, honestly, for, for anything. Well, Alex is gone. We are down to three players. That's all three of these guys, very talented players. They play high stakes cash games together all the time. They know each other. They're tough. You're right. Some of the very best in the world. This is their 15 minutes in the sun. Going after over a million dollars. Let's go back down to the table. Take a look at Brad Booth, the Canadian. Throws away 8-5. Round to Joe Tehan. He picks up a king nine. Raise it. What, no big slick? And he is going to raise it. One ten. Makes it 110,000 to go. Into the chip leader, Bert. He's got a pair of sixes. Now, many players come back over the top with a small pair in this situation. Some players just make a call, don't want to commit their chips, and others even muck it. Let's see what Bert's going to do. He's got a ton of chips. He's the chip leader with close to 2.9 million. Now, he is going to make the call, taking the conservative route here, wants to see a flop before he does anything else. Here it comes. Now, flop is queen, three deuce. Did not help Joe Tehan. So Bert has the best hand with two sixes. Joe's checked, and Bert's gonna bet, thinking the sixes are good, which in fact they are. Well, he's betting 150,000 into Joe. Wow, Joe is making this call with just a king nine, folks. Now he's doing it to set up a steal later on in this hand. Or hopes he can hit lightning here. And he does hit oh. lightning. The king pops right up on the turn. Jeez, you think this guy's running good or what, Vince? Not hesitating. Coming out and betting 200000 Well, Bert's trying to figure out how could that card have helped him. I bet when it came queen three deuce, Bert may not buy that the king helped him here. He didn't get raised on the flop no. when the queen was out there. He's going to be stubborn here. He's made this call. Well, Vance, he thinks the two sixes are still good. He's putting his opponent on a straighter flush draw, I think. Going down to the river. Here it is. Eight doesn't help either player. Well, an unsuspecting card doesn't figure to help anybody. Well, Joe's thinking the guy paid me off on the turn. Maybe he'll pay me off again on the river. Let me fire some money out here, and he bets 250000 And Bert is looking very stubborn. Look at him. He's getting his chips ready. Yeah, he's paid it off. Well, Bert is making the call here. Ooh. Well, you see him stomp the floor. He's not happy about that turn card. That was like a little hissy fit right there. Well, Bert just couldn't figure out how the king could help him. You just wouldn't think the guy would call you when you bet on the flop and it comes queen three deuce when he's holding king nine. Now that's what threw Bert off there. That's why he paid the bet off at the river. Hey, but you're playing Joe Tehan. Anything's possible with this man. He's picking up cards. He has great feel tonight. My name is Joe Tehan, and I am a professional poker player. Yeah, I lost $40,000 the night before this tournament started. It was kind of tough to wake up the next morning and come play in this, but... You know, luckily, I think top six, I think I get it back. We're here with Joe's sister, Elizabeth, and his father, Basil. And what do you guys think about Joe making a final table? You guys must be so proud. Yeah, so exciting. <laughs> it really is, and I'm, I'm shaking like a leaf. I'm so proud of him. 
I should get myself a t-shirt. <laughs> I should get myself a t-shirt. I forgot who I'm rooting for, but now I see it over here. Yeah, Joe. Joe. Well, best of luck to him. Thank you very much. Well, Joe, 25 years old, born in Utica, New York, now living in Las Vegas. And a great story about him is that a couple years back, he decided to go to Vegas with only eight grand in his pocket to play professional poker, and he has been successful ever since. Action is going to be on Bert. He caps his cards, and he's going to raise the pot. 120,000 he makes it. And Brad Booth going out quickly. Now Joe quickly calling with Jack-9. Well, why not? Every single thing seems to be going his way so far. Only hands he lost, he had the best hand then. Here's the flop. And the flop comes 8-8-7. Eight, eight, Joe T. Han has flopped a gut shot straight draw. And look at this, Vince. He is reaching for chips. Is he going to bet this? 150. Indeed he is, 150,000. Poor Bert is going to be put to the test right here. Well, he raised before the flop, but he's saying, I'm going to give you credit for something. I'm going out. Well, he just has the ace high, man, so he's going to have to let it go here. Well, Joe's giving this man a complex. Just pushing him around now. Too. You know, he's going to be tough to beat. He's catching cards and playing well. Don't go away. We're coming back with more exciting action from the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship in just a moment. My personal view on, on Table Talk is as long as you're not being offensive or rude, it's great for the game. Hello, man. Hello, Mike. How are you? Make him talk. Very good. Relaxed and confident, and it's going to work. Hello, Mike. In the past, I've asked kind of strange questions like, have you ever seen a baby pigeon? Catching them completely off guard. And in, in that moment of catching them off guard is, is where I can find a read. If they're still calm, you know, they can sit back, cross their arms, or grab a coffee. Now, generally, if they do that, they're pretty comfortable. But if they're really nervous or if they're still sitting there pretty cold, uh, generally, I'll put my chips in the middle and give them a call. Even though it's weird and wacky, in that split second, you, got you see that? You see how he wanted to show me his hand? Yeah. I happen to find that chance to be able to see if, if they have it or they don't. For more great poker tips, log on to worldpokertour.com. I've played plenty with Brad. He's a phenomenal player, and Bert's a total wild card. The strongest player is probably Brad, and Joe's tough, too. Joe and Bert I play daily with at the Blasio. They both play very well. Brad is a punk. I like to beat Brad heads up. <laughs> now that? Brad is a punk. That'd be great. Make my day. Welcome back to Mandalay Bay, where the winner tonight's going to take home over a million dollars and something money can't buy, a World Poker Tour title. Three players remaining. Bert, no longer the chip leader. It is Joe with about 3.1 million. Bert with about 2.4. Brad with about 1.4. Action's going to be on Brad Booth. Mr. Yukon with the button. He has a big hand. Ace Jack off suit. That's well, a good hand in a three-handed poker game, no doubt about it. Comes in for 90,000. Joe Tehan with a 9-7 of clubs and winning every pot, he's going to make the call. But right behind them, Bert also with a pretty good hand, King-10 of hearts. He can't get raised, so I'm sure he's going to make this call because of the pot odds he's getting. So we're going to have three-way action here. Oh, yes, a family pot. Who's going to get lucky? Well, let's come ace-deuce three with two clubs. Joe's flopped a flush draw. Joe checks. Bert checks. Brad has flopped top pair of aces, and look at him looking at his guys. 120. And Brad's going to bet 120,000 with his pair of aces. Yeah, nice kicker, Jack, right behind it. Now here comes Mr. Four Flush. Well, Joe's making the call. Bert gets out of the way. He's going to let him duel. He's hoping for a duel in the desert here. Or one of them goes bye-bye. Here comes 4th Street. It's a 7. Well, this gives Joe a pair as well as a flush draw, but he checks. And Brad checks right behind him. Yes, he slows down. Gonna Oops. give him the free card to beat him, and indeed it does. A Oops. 5 of clubs comes off. Joe has made his flush, and he's going to fire. Oh, yeah, he's going to try to give a little frostbite to the Canadian here. Well, 210,000 he bets. Now, that makes a total of 735,000 in the pot. It's only going to cost Brad 200000 more to call. You would think he has to pay it off. Is that right? Joe. But I'll tell you something. Look at Joe, man. This guy can outdraw Picasso here tonight. 
And will he get paid off the extra couple hundred thousand? Well, we've seen some reckless play by Brad so far, at least what appears reckless when he's made those moves earlier on. He's a very talented player. Can he get away from two aces for this amount of money? A large pot out there. Well, it would be spectacular if he could, but I don't think there's so many pros that would do that. You've got to get curious with this. Well, that's a very scary river card, no doubt about it. The reckless gambler going to make a good laydown right here. That's a spectacular laydown. He gets away from the two aces, and Joe T. Han continues to climb the ladder of success. Oh, well, well, man, Brad too, Booth is going to love himself yeah, when he sees this on film because that was an excellent laydown. Not a whole lot of players would make that laydown with top pair. And a pretty good kicker. And so much money in the pot. Exactly. He didn't blow him out of the water. It was the proper last bet to get a call. But he couldn't get it. Nice play by Brad. Nice suck out by Joe. All right. Action on the Canadian. Yukon throws away 10-4. And now Joe Tehan, knowing that he's heads up, he's got king deuce of diamonds. Just calls it. Well, he's going to limp in out of the small blind. Barrett with the Motown hand, Jackson Fives, says, let's see the flop. It's come eight, seven deuce with two clubs. Joe has flopped bottom pair, and he checks. Yes, he does. Burt right behind him, not going to gamble, checks as well. Turn card comes up. It's another club and a pair for Burt. Well, a great card for Burt Boutin. He now has two fives and a flush draw. Joe quickly checks. And Burt is now going to bet. Can't blame him. 100,000. Well, that's what is Joe doing here. He's only got two deuces. Look at this. He is going to raise this pot. 200,000 more here. Oh, wow. He is using the momentum he's had. And look at Bert quickly goes out. Wow. So with the oh. pair in the first draw, Bert evacuates. Look at Bert. He thank you for your blood pressure, Bert. Well, I actually like the bet that Bert made on the turn right there. But he just got outplayed by Joe Tehan in that pot. It's as simple as that. I can tell you, the way he's catching and the way he's playing, Vince, this is going to be the guy to beat here at this final table. They're playing for over a million dollars to the winner. Joe Tehan with about $3.8 million. Action's going to be on Bert. Bhutan takes a look at an 8-6 offsuit. He's going to lay it down. 120. Brad quickly makes it 120,000 with a jack nine of diamonds. Yes, he does. But right behind him, look at this hand. Joe Tihan, pair of ladies. Unbelievable, the cards this guy's catching here at this final table. Here he's picked up two queens. The question is, how is he going to play them? Well, he's got the queens, the young girlfriends. They could become very expensive, as we all know. But right now in a three-handed game, they are looking beautiful. And he's just calling, Vince. He's not re-raising here. Going to play it sly. Trying to camouflage the strength of his hand. Let's see if it works out for him. Now flop comes 9-7-5, all spades. Brad quickly checked the top pair. And Joe, with the over pair and the flush draw, is going to bet 100000 Nice, solid $100,000. Brad has top pair, so he's going to make the call here. But he could be heading toward quicksand. Nice pot developing. Fourth Street coming up. And a queen oh. comes on the turn. Can you believe this? Joe oh. Tehan now has three queens and a flush draw. Brad again checks. And Joe trying to figure out how many chips to bet where he can reel his opponent in. That's a pretty big bet, 350000 He's just saying, you know what, I'm going to make him pay for it. If this guy happens to have a king of spades and is going to draw out on me, I'm going to make him pay a lot of money for it. Well, can Brad get away from the two nines here? <clears throat> That's all right, huh? He is getting away from it, and I believe he got away from that top pair about as cheaply as he could have. Well played on both players' part. You flip him. But look at Joe Tihan extending his lead. He is a human bulldozer. He is just trampling his victims right here. And you can see Bert Boutin over there. He would have flopped this straight, wishing he was in that pot. Now, he might not have won it, but he didn't know Joe's hand was that strong. But he just can't help himself. Oh, no, no, you look at him and you just want to say, deep breaths, Bert, deep breaths. <laughs> 
Price of poker's going up $10,000. Annie's 30 and 60 blinds. Action's going to be on the Canadian. Brad Booth, he's got King Deuce this time. Well, notice what he's doing, though. He's looking at both opponents. Yeah, it's a good idea. Trying to get an instinct as to whether they're going to play the pot or not. And then opts to muck his hand. Yep, not very excited about that. And now it's on Joe in the small blind. He's got Queen 7 off suit. Well, this is known as the computer hand in poker, and he's going to raise with it. Makes it 150000 to go. He is relentless now into Bert, who's got AC Ducey, the kids' game. And Bert's going to call. Well, he's drawing his sword in the sand, Vince. He's tired of getting pushed around like a mop by this guy. He's going to start playing with him, doing so here with the ace-deuce. And the flop comes ace-8-3. Bert has finally hit top pair. Joe checks. And notice Bert checks right behind him. He's going to play it softly. Here we go with the turn. It's a king of hearts. Joe now wondering if he can steal this pot since his opponent checked on the flop. He's going to make a stab at it. He bets 140000 Now, Bert knows the guy didn't bet on the flop. Maybe he's putting him on something like king-queen here. Let's see what he's going to do with his acey Ducey now. 400. Well, he's going right over the top of him. He believes he has the best hand right now with two aces, and he's raising the pot. And what's Joe thinking about here, Vince? He only has queen seven. He made a stab at the pot. He got raised up to 400,000. The only two things he could possibly do from here is to fold his hand or to come back over the top to try to take it away from Bert, as he's done several times before. I raise. Whoa. Wow, he is going to raise here with absolutely nothing, folks. What a re-raise here. Well, look at Bert squirming in his chair. 480,000 is yes, the raise. It is a very stiff raise. Now, if you're Bert, you took your shot, you have your top pair, but a horrible kicker, just a deuce. All in. Oh, and look at this. Bert pretends he's gone over the top. What a move he's making. Well, you're right, Vince. He's going with his poker gut. His instincts here. He thinks he's got the best hand. Oh, uh, Joe folds the hand. And look at this move. Guys, what marshmallows you have to have to make that kind of re-raise. Betting it all on that assumption. Bert Bertan, you the nice man. Hand, I want a life-size poster of this guy. Hey, well, we see there what happened on the flop and the turn in that situation. What you don't see is the size of these guys' hearts, Vince. Both of them. You got to give Joe credit for making a move with that pot, and you got to give Bert credit for coming back oh, over the top for all of his chips with that hand. I think Bert just broke down eventually. That's right. He was pushed around, wasn't going to take it anymore, said, I'm going all in, and he was successful. Incredible poker. Welcome back to the Mandalay Bay Poker Championships, and right now it is who let the dogs out? <laughs> Bert Patan is the new chip leader. You know, he is the pit bull of all poker players. I can't believe this guy. Well, he's fun to watch, too, Vance. He's up and down like a jack-in-the-box. He is some character. Right now, Joe quickly out on Mad Dog, Bert Patan. He's got ace-queen this time, but just going to call. Going to play yeah. it sneaky. He just limps in here. Brad Booth with four deuce off suit. He says, give us a flop. Well, Bert has flopped. Ace is up. He's going to lead out and bet. Brad Booth. Has the gut shot wheel draw and quickly makes the call. Well, it's a $100,000 call, and it's set up beautifully by Bert because he checked. He didn't raise on the flop. Ten on the turn. I'll check. Well, Bert is going to check this time. And now Brad's going to try to steal the pot here with the gut shot wheel draw. It's one hundred and twenty grand. And Bert's going to bet 400000 here. He said, I don't believe you got a five. If you got this hand beat, good luck to you, my friend. And Brad smiling, caught with his hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> I can't get anything going here today. Well, this could put you in the old rubber room. I almost hope Bert wins this tournament so he can uh, get a real good cash game going. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, I got to fold. Well, Brad does have to get out. Vince, do you think Brad acts too quickly sometimes? I mean, he always bets very quickly when his opponents check. Never takes his time. You wonder if that hurts him. Well, Mike, when you're playing for over a million dollars, it's you know, it's not a bad idea to take your time. <laughs> I'd agree with that, Vance. No doubt about it. Playing for this kind of money and this kind of prestige by winning the WPT title, you better think about every decision you make. Action's going to be on Joe here. He looks down at a 10-7 offsuit. 
145,000. He's going to raise it on the button here. Going to try to push the dog around. He's got eight, six of diamonds. He goes out. Brad slopping his chips in the pot to make this call with the queen nine. Gambling here a little bit because he doesn't have that many chips left, Vince. That took about a third of his chips right there just to make that call. Oh, and what a flop for Brad. It's come 9-4-3. He's flopped top pair and checks. Oh, he checked it so fast. And here comes Joe firing at the pot with absolutely nothing. And there go all the chips. He's going over the top all in. Yep, he has check raised for all his chips. I don't think he can call. Joe knows he's been had he's got here. got seven high. Ten high, ten high. Ten high. Oh, he's exposed that he has a ten high. Well... Suggesting that he's going to fold. Well, Can't a lot think. of money in there. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. They were talking about the hands. I said they have 10 eye. I can't come. Joe it folds his hand. Not much to compete with, so Brad Booth taking this one. Brad gambling at the right time there. Called that raise before the flop. It paid off for him as he flops top pair and takes down the pot. In the meantime, he's trying to come back here in this tournament and capture this title. Let's see if he can do it. Action's on him. Well, he folds a 10-6 very rapidly, and now Joe Tehan with a6 and a raise. Well, you can't blame him for raising with an ace and a small blind. Into Bert Batan. Oh, and he's got the death hand tonight. Ace queen. Oh, Bench, you gotta think this hand is the best hand against another blind hand, though. He's gonna play it sneaky, just calling it, not going over the top. So let's see what happens. Oh, it's come a6-5. Joe Tehan has flopped top two pair. And Bert Boutan has two aces with the queen kicker. This could spell trouble for Bert. And Joe not going to play it slow. He's coming out to bet $150,000 with his two pair. Well, no way Bert is going to get rid of this hand, I can tell you. I'm surprised he didn't come over the top of this. He just calls it. Yep. Here comes the turn card. Well, a four comes off. Makes a potential straight out there. Joe with his aces up, aces and sixes. Well, he's going to bet, Vince. Let's see how much he's going to bet now. Nearly 600000 in the pot, yet he only bets 200000 here. Uh-oh. Bert Boutin now getting out some artillery vents. This could spell big trouble for Bert here. Wow. He's going to make it 600000 to go. Well, he thought he was trapping his man. Little does he know. The tail is definitely wagging the dog right here. Joe Tehan knows there are a couple hands that could beat him right now. Possible straight. Maybe his opponent's got three fives. Remember the last time he had two pair, a long time ago, he had kings and nines. He let Brad take the pot away from him with just a pair of nines because he lost the lead in the hand. Will he make that mistake again? Joe Tehan going into a wounded mode, pretending like he's hurt. Well, he's certainly taking his time. And he's just calling, Vince. He is not going to re-raise here. Now, you wonder if he's doing this because he wants to see if a club or a straight card comes off of there. Just a humongous pot. And the last card is a nine of diamonds. You can't think that would help either player. Well, you're right about that. It's not another straight card. Not a flush card. Action on Joe T. Han. What's he going to do now? Burt just staring him down. Well, Joe's got to be afraid of only one thing. If the guy happens to have a set and is really slow playing it, but you can't play that way. You have aces and sixes. And if the guy did have a set, don't you think he'd have come over the top just to protect himself for the last card? I think he would. Yes, I think whatever he bets, he's going to get called here. I can't see Burke getting away from this hand. Here comes the ammunition. The bet's coming out. It yep. looks like a half a million dollars. Yep. Call. And Bert quickly calls him, as we predicted. Oh. Come on, baby. Oh, man. Well, Joe Tian is going to take it down with aces and sixes. Oh. And he goes over to his fan club to get a little congratulations. And right now, pull down the poster of Bert Batan because it is getting ugly. Tossing in chips and cards. Anger spilling over at the table. Well, Vasque, your opponent's flopped aces up, and you've got ace-queen. It's a tough hand to get away from. 
Verputan just trapped there as the cars lie. And once again, the death hand this evening, the ace queen. Come on, this is ridiculous. That is just making everyone go broke. We warned him. You get the ace queen, just muck it. Throw it away here tonight. It is death. Nearly a $3 million pot, Joe. Tehan is now our new chip leader once again. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. You're watching the inaugural Mandalay Bay Poker Championship where three high-stakes cash game players are battling it out to see who takes home over a million bucks and a WPT title. Yeah, they started days ago, 349 players, but we're down to these three great players going after over $1 million. Well, right now, our current chip leader with over 4.4 million in chips is Joe T. Han. Burke Bhutan in second place with 2.2 million. And Brad Booth on the short stack right now with about 350,000. And Vince, it's up to him. He's got king five of clubs. Yes, he does. And look at this. He's capping his card with one of them, and all the rest are going in. Well, you're right, Vince. He hasn't moved in. He saved one chip to cap his card with. Joe T. Han with queen eight quickly folding. But Mad Dog Batan right behind him. He's got a wired pair of threes. Got to be interested. Well, you know, at worst, you're going to be in a race situation here. Your opponent's going to have two overcards. If he doesn't have a pair, you don't mind moving in with two threes, but do you really want to call with them? And the difference between Make it 280. third and second, over 150,000. Look at this. He is going to push it in. Well, you're right, Vance. And he has taken that extra chip and set Brad all in before the flop here. So I think Brad's going to be pretty happy. I don't think I can call. To see Bert's hand, and he's got two live over cards. <laughs> That's about a coin flip as to who's going to win the pot. See, Brad wanted to hold on to that last chip. Well, it's got to go, Brad. Now they're going to turn up the cards. Bert proudly pulls up his threes. And Brad with his king five of clubs. So it's the under pair versus the two over cards. The last time Bert had that situation, he was in a race with Alex where he had two jacks. Alex had the ace queen. The pair stood up. He made jacks full to win it. Can the pair stand up again for him? He knows if he wins this pot, we'll be down to heads up play. Well, it's come 8 7 do. So far, so good for Bert. Don't pet the cat. Brad is going to have to catch a king or a five to take the lead or two running cars to make a straight to stay alive in this tournament. Mad Dog pacing the grounds. Here we go with the turn card. Fourth Street, here it is. Eight. Well, a jack comes off. Brad Booth must catch a king or a five or he's going to be our third place finisher. See you next time, Vinny. <laughs> okay, here's the last card. Will it be a king or a five? Hold on, slow. Bert can't even look. Yeah. Nope, it's an ace. Bert Bouton has done it. Oh, man, that is going to do it for Brad Booth from Vancouver, Canada. He is going to take home $319,000. And that's the good news for him is he can go home and order room service. Well, that's right. Go back to Bellagio. Maybe get that free mint by your bed. Get your sheets taken down so nicely. So here we go. Down to heads up play. We have the money presentation. Out comes the beautiful Mandalay Bay girls carrying the cash. That's what's great about the World Poker Tour. No checks, folks. Just cash. Another millionaire about to be crowned here on the World Poker Tour. Bert, Mad Dog Batan, going after Joe Tehan. <laughs> look at Bert. Easy boy. Over a million bucks and a WPT title on the line. Which one of these guys is going to take it down? All right, the heads up competition about to begin. Bert, Mad Dog Batan up against Joe. Mr. Clean to hand. The plans are going up to 50 and 100. Cards are in the air here, Mike. Right now. Joe Tehan starting out with four and a half million in chips. Bert Bhutan about two and a half million. Action is gonna be on Mad Dog Bhutan. He's got five and ten Woolworths right here. Not very impressive hand. I'm raising it uh, two hundred thou. Two hundred thousand more. He's gonna make it three hundred thousand to go with a ten-five off suit here. He's gonna play power position poker, but right behind him, Joe Tehan has a real hand. King Queen of Hearts. So he's not going anywhere. He has made the call. Many guys would come back over the top with King Queen suited in a heads up situation, but Joe wants to see the flop first. 
And the flop is ace, eight, three. No help to either player. And Joe checks. And Bert Boutin with absolutely nothing here is going to fire a half a million at the pot. And he's going to take it down. Well, that takes a lot of nerve. And Just can, a brave bet right there. You can tenderly say that when you're playing heads up, usually the more aggressive player fares better. Here's a perfect example of that. Burt raising before the flop, betting on the flop with absolutely nothing, and taking down the pot. And Vince, if it comes down to experience, you got to give Burt Bhutan the edge. He's been at big final tables before and captured titles. That could bode well for him here. Well, you can see he changes gears very nicely. Action's going to be on Joe T. Han. He's got king five of clubs this time. Well, that's not a bad hand in a heads-up situation. 250. Look at this. He's making it a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, it makes a $150,000 raise. Into Mad Dog. Now, Mad Dog's got King Nine offsuit. Well, because of the WPT hole cam brought to you by Budweiser, we can see that Bird has him dominated here. And he's going to make the call for $150,000 more. So it's King Nine for Bert, King Five for Joe. Here comes a flop. The flop is Jack Eight Three with two diamonds. No help to either player. Action on Bert, and he checks. And Joe checks right behind him. He doesn't fire another shell at the pot. Seven of Spade comes off. Gives an inside straight draw there to Bert. He's first to act, and he look at he's getting chips out. It looks like. Well, Vance, he sensed that the flop did not help his opponent, so he's going to bet to try to win this pot right here, and does so. Yeah, the dog's bark is very loud, and it's going to work. Well, Vince, if you remember on hand one, even though Bird didn't hit anything on the flop, he bet and won the pot after raising pre-flop. Here, Joe raised pre-flop, but did not bet on the flop, where I believe he would have won the pot. So in two hands, I believe Bert's outplayed Joe on both occasions so far. Well, these guys aren't catching cards here in the heads-up battle. They are just betting on nerve and imagination. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more on the World Poker Tour. Deep into the night we go as the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship continues. I'm Vince Van Patten along with Mike Sexton. We've got a good one going here. Well, we sure do. And you know, both of these guys want that WPT title extremely badly. Joe T. Han with about four million. Bert Mad Dog Bhutan with about three. Action right back on Joe T. Han, the 25-year-old from Vegas. Joe looks down at a Jack-5 offsuit. Not a strong hand. But he's going to raise with it. Comes in for 200,000. And now Bert looking down at a little suited connector, call. five, six of diamonds, and he makes a quick call. It's the kind of hand you want to see a flop with. You hope you hit lightning where you might bust your opponent. And the flop comes 10, eight, deuce, no help to either opponent. Bert checks. Now last time Joe failed to bet after the flop. And this time he's gonna fire some chips out there. Yeah. And it's gonna work. Bert throws his hand away. Joe learned his lesson from last time when he checked on the flop where he would have won that pot. This time he bets and takes it down. Well, I am impressed. So far in this heads-up battle, it is an absolute blarney show. I mean, these guys don't pair up. They are just betting with absolutely nothing. Well, you're only supposed to make a pair one hand out of every 17 tries. So what that means is most of the time, neither player is going to have a pair in heads-up battle. Whoever fires the most at the pot generally fares the best in heads-up battles. So that is going to extend Joe's lead to about $4.2 million. The young 25-year-old with his family watching from the sidelines in a great place to take this title. Joe reminded me that his mother's birthday was today. Even though she died five years ago, he thought it could be an omen for him. So far, it is. Action's on Bert, though. He's got Queen Eight of Diamonds. Well, he's just going to limp in, Vince, and call on the button with this hand. And Joe Tahan has queen six, but of clubs. He says, give us a flop. So both players has queen high suited right now. Bert in the driver's seat with queen eight. Comes the flop. Oh, it's come queen jack eight. Bert Bhutan has flopped queens and eights. Oh. And Joe has flopped top pair of queens, and he checks it. 100. And Mad Dog comes out with a stiff bet of $100,000. Well, Joe's got top pair. He's going to come over the top of him, Vince. He's making it 300000 to go. Oh, wow. This is dreamland right now for Bert. I want to raise it. Raise it. Well, Bert, Bert is going to re-raise here. There's a potential straight on the board, plus two hearts. 
He didn't want to give his opponent any free cards to draw at that could beat him. He's made it a million straight here. Now you're sitting in Joe's seat and you've got top pair. All of a sudden it doesn't look very good. Yeah, I think it's the kind of hand you might be able to get away from. The guy bet and you re-raise a couple hundred thousand and he comes over the top. Now you just have queens with the six kicker. Well, the I only, think it's suicide if you make this kind of call. Well, the only way I believe Joe could call here is if he puts his opponent on a straight draw or a flush draw. But after a bet and a raise and then a solid re-raise of 700,000, I, I, come on, does this kind of guy play games like that? Well, you make a good point here, Vince. Generally speaking, you don't make those kind of raises on drawing hands. You make them when you've got a hand, and that's the case here. Well, Joe does lay it down, so give him credit for laying down top pair here. Very solid lay down. Burke Bhutan standing up, stacking chips. And Vince, as you said many times before, there's no better feeling than to drag in a pot, stack up the chips, and you get a little smirk feeling. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is a beautiful thing. <laughs> now, Burt Patan has been playing poker for a long time. He's got to be enjoying this. So much on the line for both of these guys. Both desperately want to capture a WPT title opportunity on the table right here, right now. Who's going to do it? Well, Joe T. Hunt is called with just Jack-3 and Burt Patan. With Jack-6, says, let's see the flop. Well, the flop is Jack-10-7, all clubs. Right, Both players have flop top pair. And right now, Bert has the better kicker, but he checks. Joe Tehan has the flush draw. And a pair of Jacks, and he is going to bet 150000 Well, Bert with top pair is going to make the call. Got some loose change right there. Might as well throw it in. Fourth Street coming up. Well, the ace of spade comes off. Neither player are going to be fond of that card, I doubt. Check. Bert checks. And they and, both check. Well, Joe checks right behind him again. He wouldn't bet again. Five of hearts comes off on the river. And that's, I believe, Bert thinks sure. he's got the best hand right now with the two jacks. So he's going to bet. Well, in reality, it would be a split pot at this point if Joe should call, but... Got to put in a couple hundred thousand dollars to get this chop pot. Well, so much pressure on every decision right now. <sighs> Joe getting himself in trouble again because he lost the lead in this hand. He didn't bet on the turn here where he would have put the pressure on Bert as to what to do. Now the pressure's back on him. Yes, it is. And you know, Joe, got to say the game is a lot easier when you're picking up ace-king every hand. <laughs> well, he's going to lay it down. So once again, he gets himself in a little trouble, I believe, because he loses the lead. Oh, yeah, and the dogs are barking here for Bert Batan taking that pot. Well, he closes the gap on the chip leader once again, Vince. This is a real battle here we've got going on in the Mandalay Bay Poker Championship. Well, we're coming down to the wire. Stay with us. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. The Mandalay Bay Poker Championship continues down to heads-up action. And the antes are going up to 15,000. The blinds are going to be 80 and 160. It is gambling time right now. Joe Tahan still the chip leader with 3.8 million, but Bert Bhutan with about 3.2 million is on the move. Action on Joe. He has king five. He's just going to call this right now. And now Bert with just an awful 8-3 offsuit. He says, give us a flop. He's happy to see a flop with his hand. Here we go. Well, the flop is eight, deuce, deuce with two hearts. Bird has made two pair, eights and deuces, and he's reaching for chips. 400. 400,000. A hefty bet. Yep. Sticks around with a junk hand, hits two pair. Well, this is amazing. Joe T. Han, with absolutely nothing, Ooh. makes the $400,000 call here. He's calling here to try to set up a steal later on in this hand. Or hit a king, perhaps. Here we go with the turn card. Well, an ace comes on the turn. Bert still believes he's got the best hand with two eights. Indeed, he does. He's reaching for chips here. 600. Well, you got to both have to figure they would have raised before the flop if they had an ace in the hand. So a very aggressive $600,000 coming out with Bert. 
Well, Vince, I can't believe this. Hey. Joe has absolutely nothing here. No pair, no draw. And yet he is reaching for chips, Vince. I can't imagine he's going to make another call here to set up a play for the river. But could he possibly come over the top of this hand? Praise. He's doing it, Vince. Oh. This is amazing, folks. We are talking about playing for a million bucks in a WPT title, and the guy's got the nerve to raise it over a million dollars here with absolutely nothing. Well, he is king high, and he's pushing it. It looks like it's an additional $700,000 to call. And now Bert is saying to himself, oh, Mad Dog, what is he trapping you? Did he have a little deuce? Does he have an ace? He is not liking this. He paid a great bet on the turn here, thinking he had the best hand, but now he's going to lay it down. Outplayed by Joe Tian right there. Chalk one up to some great poker plan there on the part of Joe. Good end. We are seeing some very high level poker. Joe T had to smooth call on the flop with nothing and then to bust the re-raise on the turn to take that pot. Well, you're so right about that, Vince. It's a lot scarier when you're playing a pot and a guy calls you on the flop and then makes a move on the turn than when he raises you right away on the flop. You automatically think he's bluffing in. When he calls you and waits to the next street to make his move, you got to give him credit for a hand. Well, you got to admire Joe Tian, the 25-year-old, masterfully played, you know, absolutely confounding Bert Bhutan into submission. Mad Dog, seething right now. He could boil a pot of coffee on his head. Oh, boy. It's like he forgot where his bone was buried, Vince. We're watching some of the best players in the world. Hey, these may not be the names you know on TV and you see all the time, but these are some of the very best going after a million dollars. Let's go back down to the table. It's going to be on Bert. And Mad Dog looks at an uneventful 10-7, and he said, I've had enough. I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to fold his hand. And Joe T. Han just has to blow on that pot, and he takes that one as well. I am still mesmerized by the play that Joe T. Han just made a moment ago. He called on the flop with no hand and no draw. He raised on the turn with no hand and no draw. And he took down the pot. He's now the massive chip leader with well over $5 million in chips. Burt Bhutan, less than $2 million. We're talking about making a play at a pot in a critical situation. Heads up when you're playing for a million bucks and a WPT title. That's incredible. Well, this guy is incredible. Just to come to Vegas a few years back with eight grand in your pocket, Great. with aspirations of becoming a poker pro and then doing it, says a lot. I move there with less, Vince. <laughs> Joe T. Han this time has nine, eight different suits. Well, he's going to raise with it. Looks like he's making it 400000 to go. With the 9-8, so pushing around with not much. But right behind him, Mad Dog Bhutan has a big hand, ace-10. Oh, and Boy, and look at this, Burt's going all in with the ace-10. He says, if you can beat this hand, good luck to you, my friend. I'm putting all my chips out there right now. He's raising it nearly a million and a half dollars. Wow, this is a strong move by Mad Dog. Going up $1.5 million. Another million and a half bucks. Could he possibly make this call with nine high events? <laughs> you wouldn't think. I mean, he's not necessarily pot committed with just a nine eight. Well, I don't even have close to a hand. Maybe he's thinking his opponent's got a small pair, something like fives or sixes. Joe's in total chip command right now. I just can't imagine you're going to give away a million and a half dollars more here by calling with nine high. I'm in such bad shape here. I don't know if I should try to get lucky or what. Come on, Joe. <clears throat> I'm a pretty big dog here, Jesus. Bert up from his seat, realizing what a great place he's in. He loved hearing that I have nothing. I'll gamble. Wow, Vince, he is going to make the call here. Oh, he is going to gamble it. This is unbelievable, folks. We just saw the skill demonstrated a moment ago by Joe T. Han. Now we're going to have to witness some luck if he's going to take this title right here. You know, poker's got everything that most people enjoy. Skill, luck, risk versus reward. Well, it's all on the line right here, right now. Well, look at Bert Batan. He is loving this, clapping it, saying, I am the man. I am Bert Batan. I have made a great move. Come get me. Well, Bert knows 
If he wins this pot, he'll be the commanding chip leader in this heads-up battle. Well, he made the right decision. Ace-10, push it all in, make a guy pay it off, and he may get very lucky with this. He can. <laughs> so Bert must catch a 10 or running aces to win this pot and stay alive. Well, Vince, you got to say Joe Gamble this hand. Come on, show a 10 up. Win or lose this pot. And right now he's a big favorite to win it. Here comes the turn. Wow, an ace comes off. That gives Bert two more outs to win this pot. He can now win it with an ace for a 10. Who would have thought he could have made ace and 10 and lost this pot? Oh, incredible. Bert saying to himself, is there any justice? Here we go. Bert needs an ace or a 10 to stay alive. Coming down to the last card. Come on, baby. The river of dreams, what will it be? It's an eight. That's going to do it. Well, Joe Tion celebrates with his fans. He is a happy camper right now, Vince, and why not? But I'll tell you one thing. You can't say this guy doesn't have some gamble in him to call a million and a half dollar raise in that spot with a nine eight. Folks, you got to have some kind of feeling to do that. questions for you. First of all, tell us how you called a million and a half dollar bet there with a 9-8 on the river. Did you have a feeling? <laughs> no, no feeling really. <laughs> I just wanted to gamble there, so I uh, had a chance to win it and I got lucky, so Bert, Bert played excellent. Well, you played excellent as well all week long, and amazingly, the crowd won't know this, but we played in a poker game together last week. You predicted you'd be at this final table. You not only got here, you took home this title. That is an amazing forecast. Thank you very much. And now, as a custom on the World Poker Tour, it's time to toast our champion with Budweiser, the official beer of the World Poker Tour. And let's hear it for the winner of the inaugural Mandalay Bay Poker Championship, Joe Tian. Sabina Gadecki and everyone at the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching. And until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs>